All right, everybody, welcome to today's video. Today we're going to be doing a frog mob boss. A frog mob boss, okay? So we're going to go with layer one. We're going to use a little sketchy airbrush layer. This is where we map everything out in terms of how we want the character to look. I'm going to do a nice big face, going to have some eyes, kind of use the the big cheeks that this frog's going to have because he's a mob boss and he's, he's well fed. Um, do some sketchy lines here for the collar the lower part of his face, the um, the tie, and parts of the suit. And then we're going to do his hands on the side. Uh, just remember to keep the, the pen moving here. You're just doing really sketchy outlines of what this is going to look like. Now we're going to go to layer two, and that's going to be our ink layer. And for this, we're going to use a 6B pencil. Uh, sometimes with my drawings, I'll use an, um, a technical pen or a 6B pencil. Uh, they're very close. The difference is the 6P pencil has a little bit of a rougher texture than the technical pen. So depending on my mood in the day, <laughs> I might want to do a little rougher sketch for something like this. So um, that's what we're going to use today. So I'm following over the lines of the sketch with the um, uh, the pencil. I'm going to use the the line work to really emphasize the, the finality of each, of each stroke and what it's going to look like. Uh, I'm going to work on the eyes. These are just just outlines of where they're going to be over the sketch layer. Um, and now we're going to start moving around under the eye. We're going to give the frog <laughs> some bags under his eyes because most mob bosses, if you've seen them in real life or you've seen them in drawings, they've got some some bags under the eyes, probably from a lot of sleepless nights worrying about whether they're going to live or die the next day. Um, you know. So here we go with those lines. And now we're going to work our way into the eye. So we're going to have a little eyeball there, a little iris, then the other iris. And then we're going to work our way to the outline of the eye. And I always like doing the outline because it really emphasizes the middle part of the eye. And we're using the same thickness of line strokes that we are with the rest of the drawing. So now we're going to add a couple wrinkles, uh, almost little wrinkles by the eyes, um, just to add some emphasis. And, of course, we're going to give him, since he's a mob boss, we're going to give him a cigar because he's always celebrating something, sadly. Um, so we've got the cigar here, a couple quick lines at the top to indicate the cigar is, uh, being, is already lit. I'm just going to erase the line in between the frog and the cigar. And now we're going to work our way down towards the bottom half of the drawing, and we're going to start doing the tie, the shirt, the jacket, and um, start filling in these details that you're going to need for the final drawing. Now I'm going to give him the vest underneath the jacket. He's going to be a fancy mob boss, kind of old school style that he's got going on. Now we're going to go back to layer one, our sketch layer, and we're just going to start to erase and get rid of those original sketch lines. Sometimes I'll wait till later in the drawing to do it, but in this case I feel like getting rid of them now. Now we're going to go back to layer two, which is the uh, the ink layer, and we're going to start to add. Uh, we're going to take away the lines. We're going to erase some of the lines that we put in there that we don't need anymore on the ink layer, which, as you can see, are right under the jacket. The jacket's going to be covering his uh, bottom torso line, so we're going to get rid of that, obviously. So there we go. And now we're going to work our way back to adding more. So we're going to start to uh, make sure we get our 6B pencil. And now we're going to switch over to peppermint, as it's called, under the sketching layer. And what peppermint is, it's just a, it's a very shade version of the, the pencil. So it's a nice soft look. So you can use this for some shading. Um, now when I use the technical pen... I would do this with the pen, and it's a much darker look. So for this drawing, I'm going to use the peppermint on the sketch layer because it gives a nice, sketchy, shady look to it. Um, and I can I can do the layering in terms of the darkness. The harder I push, the darker it is. The less I push, the lighter it is. So that's um, this is something where I want this really sketchy look uh, for this mob boss. So I'm going to use the peppermint layer here um, to really emphasize that in the spots I want to. Now, we always remember that the light is coming from above. So as you can see with the cigar, I have the sketching uh, below the bottom part. And then I'm doing that now with the eyes. 
so right below the eyes, those good old bags below the frog eyes, and in between those little layers there, that's where the um, the light is hiding. So we're just going to just gently go over it, almost like you're painting. And we're just going to keep using strokes in, the, in areas where we feel like we want to add this. And when you use this kind of sketching, it really gives the, the drawing a more dynamic look. So that's what we're going to do here. And now I'm just going to look over. I'm going to keep working on this eye. I'm going to just move my way around with the, the shading here. And again, this is all about, you just, <laughs> it's like you're, you're not searching for something because you know where you want to go. It's just that the more you add the shading, the more you're, you start looking around and saying, oh, I want to put some more over here or less over here. And for me, uh, the eyes are one of the favorite, uh, my favorite parts to shade because uh, they're very expressive and it really helps with the, the expression of that. So now this part, I'm going inside the eye right there. I do the shading on the actual iris and then I'm going to go above on the eyelid. And just keep, the thing to remember with this is pressure and non-pressure. The darker you want it, press harder. The lighter you want it, ease up on the pressure. Um, and that's one of the, it really gives you that nice sense of control um, that you get when you do it on old school paper. So it's a nice feature of the digital Procreate um, pens that they have. So I'm just going to keep moving around. I'm going to go below the nostrils now of the frog, give a little indentation of the light, uh, the shade below the, the nostril there. And normally when I do the, the shading, I'll create a third layer. In this case, I just did it um, on layer number two, uh, which is the same layer as the, what I'm doing right now in terms of adding more wrinkles to the frog because the frog, <laughs> he's an older mob boss, so we've got wrinkles coming from his neck and his skin. And this, again, this gives it more of a, a dynamic look. The more detail you can add without having to do too much detail is uh, is really cool because you you're getting uh, all the work. With, you're getting all the results without half, you know, with half the work. So, it's really about uh, you know inferring what's happening here. So, we don't need to do every single every single wrinkle on his chin, but we do enough just to really give the detail of that. Now, I'm using obviously the peppermint uh, pen in the sketch layer, and I'm just adding in the shade below, like we did above uh, with the cigar, and below the eyes. So we know that because the frog has such a large chin a lot of light is going to be trapped, uh, won't be able to hit the underside of the, the frog's chin, so we've got to create that shade down there. Now what I'm doing in terms of the, I'm doing a little bit of cross hatching, which is where you have the pen going one way with the stroke, and then you reverse it and have the pen go the other way. Um, and if I was using an ink pen, it would look almost like a cross hatching of a, of a quilt. Um, because this is a soft peppermint pen in the sketch layer, it melds together with a nice soft look, which I like for the shading. So, and when we go to the coloring layer after, I'm going to add some some darkness on that as well, which will emphasize the shade even more. So this is almost when you think about it, the foundation layer of the shading, which is um, which has a really nice effect to it. So we've got a little bit of the chin done here, and we're going to keep moving our way around, remembering that you've got the hard pressure and then the soft pressure which is the key to the shading. And then we're going to move towards the middle of the chin. And these, as you can tell, are just back and forth strokes. Left, right, left, right, left, right, right, left. And with hard pressure and then we're leaving it for the lighter pressure. And that's really giving the, the impression of the shade <laughs> below this large bullfrog's chin so yeah, he's definitely a bullfrog I would have been almost a bully frog actually because mob boss, bosses are bullies so he's a uh, he's a bully frog so that's definitely what he is so we're going to keep moving around with the shade and a lot of times when I do this I'll put an initial layer of shade down and the more I look at it and stand back and say hey do I want to add something to this do I want to keep going with the shade you'll, you'll add more sometimes so that can be it's almost a discovery period when you when you keep using the shade to be, hey, this was my plan, but now I'm going to kind of deviate from that. So here I'm just going to keep following below the lines that I've drawn, um, right below there. So as I'm working my way around, I'm adding darker areas 
to where the shade initiates from because that would be the darkest points of the folds of the skin. And then I just keep moving my way around, just like this. Sometimes I'll crosshatch, sometimes I'll go in the same direction. All depends on you know, how you want it to look. And you'll know once you start sketching which way you want to you want to make it. Now, it doesn't have to be, the sketch lines don't have to be uniform. In other words, if you cross hatch in some areas, you don't have to match that if you don't want to in other areas. Now, if you feel like you want that symmetry of look, then, then go ahead and match, but it's really a personal preference as far as that, I think. So, now here's a good example of where I went dark and went super light up along the side of his chin, um, just to really give that emphasis of the light starting to hit, and we need to back off on how dark the shade is. So I'm going to keep moving around, and as you can see now, there's a good darkness coming from the jowls slash skin folds of this frog. We're going to go right below his lip, add a little bit there, a couple lines, and then we're going to move to the top bottom part of the lip, just with a lighter, uh, lighter shade, where the light's hitting on the top part of it, but we want to show the emphasis of the lip. So it's a good way to do that, especially in a light manner. I'm going to add a little bit below the cigar to emphasize that it's hitting... It's on the inside part of his mouth, which the indentation is shown by the shading, which you want to remember. Now we're going to go back to layer two. We're going to switch to our 6B pencil, and we're going to add some more details in the suit. So here we've got the tie. I'm adding a couple quick squiggly lines almost to indicate the wrinkles in his tie, which you see there. I'm going to add a couple buttons because he's got to be able to button his vest. And then we're going to add a couple more wrinkles here along this shirt top collar. Now I've got to add the little sides of the suit there, the lapels. And we're going to give him a little little pocket square there that's just poking out because he's super fancy. Then we're going to add the arms there on the side and we're adding little lines uh, along there to indicate that the suit is wrinkled. Uh, not wrinkled, but there are indentations where the suit uh, bends, so to speak. And then we're going to add fine lines just along there. And this is all by pushing lighter, like I mentioned earlier. I'm going to give some lines there to indicate the suit is well-worn in terms of, you know, it's hugging his body because the suit is a little tight because he's a very big bully frog. So he, uh, the tailor that did the suit barely got him in it. Now we're going to go to layer number three, and we're going to use the peppermint again because now we're going to go back and add some more shading. So I'm going to work my way along the arm here. And again, these are very, very light strokes. And as you can see, it's a very soft look, the shade, which I like in contrast to the lines. So keep moving along there. And now I'm adding a little bit more pressure, as I mentioned earlier, to where you're going to see where the shade begins. And then it starts to lighten up as the light comes back. And now we're going to work the other arm. So the other arm, I'm starting where there's going to be a lot of dark shade, and then it's going to be lighter shade. And I'm using a little bit of the cross hatching, a little bit of the same, same movement towards the same direction. I'm mixing it up a lot in this drawing in terms of uh, not being too uniform. Now we're going along the lapel. We're giving some dark shade below the sides because that's where it's hitting in his suit. We're going to use a lighter sketch shade on the top of the lapel because again the light is hitting. And Now I'm going to work my way along the side of the suit. So as you can see I'm starting dark to light. So pressing the hardest, easing up on the press as I go forward. And these are just up and down strokes. Um, sometimes I'll cross hatch from the back but in this case I'm going to go up and down, up and down and keep working my way from the top to the bottom of the suit. And by doing that, it gives some nice highlight to the wrinkles in the suit in terms of the lines that are coming horizontally. So that's why I like to do that for effect. Now I'm gonna work my way with more shade there. Work my way to the inside of the vest, which you can see right there. And it's important when you're doing this to really 
just know that the light source is coming from one particular area because it guides you in terms of where you know you'll want to put the shade. And the shade really gives the, the drawing a lot of detail and adds a lot to the, the depth of the drawing. Just keep coloring in like this. And then we're going to add some shading behind the tie, which is where the shirt and tie are hitting. And then we bring some shade down from the top. And we add some more shading in there. And readjust it. The great thing about Procreate is you can move the square around the drawing pad as much as you want. You need to flip it upside down, turn it to the side. Sometimes it's easier to do strokes of shade if you turn the canvas and do it from a particular angle where you don't have to move your arm, you just move the, the canvas around, so it's, it's, it's pretty neat. Um, now we're going to go below the vest, do a little bit of shading there, right where the, the jacket and the vest hit on the pants. Then we're going to move our way back up to the lapel, coming down from the jowls of the frog, which are causing a lot of shade at the top part of the suit. Then we're going to move our way down from the inside part of the jacket to the outer part of the vest, where the light is hitting the middle part of the suit. And we just kind of randomly jump around here, looking for areas we want to add shade. And again, with the, the goal in mind of having the shade where the, the light is hitting, you want to have the shade away from that. So they're all different points on the body and on the face. I'm going to do some more with the lapel here. Keep doing that. Bring it out to where the pocket square is. Just a couple quick shading lines to show the indentation that the pocket square is inside the pocket. And we do a little bit of shade below to show that the light is hitting the top part of the pocket square. Then we're going to do some more shading coming up from the bottom. Gonna add some more on the lapel. Keep moving our way from the side of the jacket towards the front. Again, up and down strokes, up and down strokes, harder to lighter. That's how that works. And it really gives you an idea of where the light hitting and where it is not hitting, which is the whole point of <laughs> doing shading. Now I'm going to work on his pants here, bringing it up from the corner, from the bottom left out to the right again darker to lighter. I'm going to do the other side of the pants there, so the shade coming there. Do a little bit of dark shading below where the jacket is hitting on the open points of the jacket. And then we just start to, to look over if there's any other spots that we want to add shade. Um, what I'm going to do here now is going back to the second layer and I'm going to add his hands in because our mob boss needs hands to indicate number of fingers, to indicate number of people he wants to have killed. So he needs to be able to, to, to give those messages accurately. And he likes using his hands for, for emphasis, so we need to have him have hands. So now that we've got that drawn out, we're going to go back to our layer number three and we're going to go to the peppermint, which is, the again, the soft shade layer. And we're going to start adding in the, the shade. So the palms of his hands, we have the darkness there, a little bit on the bottom side of his thumb, as the light's coming from above. Then we're going to go to the other hand, do right below his thumb, and work our way from the bottom part of his hand and the palm outward. And this is all about just knowing where the dark is. And again, these are up and down motions. And we just fill in little gap areas where we see where it shouldn't be as light. Now we're going to go to layer number four, and this is going to be our color layer. So we know our bullfrog is green, so we're going to go a little bit darker than bright green because he's a um, he's a darker character, so we don't want it night we don't want it nice and bright and sunny. 
So this is the color green we're going with, and we just use the airbrush brush, and we start going through, just like a color in a coloring book. So just start adding the color. We do his face, and we do his hands. And now we're going to go to the white, and this is where we're going to add the white of the eyes. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll erase the color on the eyes and then I'll use a different layer to color in the eyes because you don't have to worry about staying within the lines. In this case, I'm doing it all within the same layer. Now we've got to choose the color of his eyes, so we're going to do a, almost a greenish yellow. Make it stand out. We're going to go, uh, we're going to put this in layer number four and we just start coloring the eyes in. And then we want to add a different color to the outside of the eye, so we're going to use a little bit of yellow just for the lines right outside the eye, so it really makes the green pop. And then we go to our white, and we're going to do little circles inside the green to show where the light is hitting his eyes. They're just soft little circles that indicate the light. Now we're going to use the airbrush again, the soft brush, and we're going to start to show where the light is hitting the frog. So it's hitting the top of his head and along his eyes. And this is done by lightly using the brush, not putting a lot of pressure, and just moving a little circular motions back and forth just to indicate where the light is hitting his skin. So there we go there. Do right below his eyes. Go right to the wrinkles in his eyelids below, then along the side of his face, down the sides. And now we're going to switch up the color a little bit. And this is going to be a little bit yellowish, almost orange tint to it, right below his chin, because the frog does have a different color on the underside of his chin than he does on the top of his body. So, and this really gives some nice dynamics to it in terms of the color. So you've got the green on the top and you've got the yellow uh, below, um, which is a nice change. So it's not all uniform. And it gives a nice look to it. And then we're just you know working with our eraser around the outside of the drawing and we're getting rid of <laughs> all the color that's outside the lines because we don't want that. We want to stay within the lines. So. And then I'm just going to keep working my way around the outside. And just keep erasing, 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 erasing. It's the easiest part of all this. <laughs> and then we're going to keep moving, 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 moving. Back when you did this when there wasn't a digital platform, you really had to make sure you got your coloring correct because you couldn't you couldn't change it. You could change the sketch layer on paper, which is what the eraser was for, the physical eraser, but the fact that you can do this all digital now with so many layers is just such an advantage to the artist. You can have your iPad anywhere you go. You can get the drawings done in so many layers, change things so easily. If you do something for a professional project for someone or try to meet a deadline, and the editor wants you to change something, it's very easy to go back in and just change things. So it's really, really, really convenient. And the look of it is how it would look on regular paper. You know, they've done a great job of capturing the, the brush strokes of the different pencils and pens and brushes and everything. It's great. So here we're going to go to layer number five, and we are going to go with our soft brush, and we're going to color in the, uh, the cigar. Give him a brown cigar. Here we go. And now we're going to add a little bit of the white on top to show where the light is hitting on the top of the cigar, just like that. And now we've got to indicate that the cigar is lit, so we need a little bit of red. And we're going to airbrush the front of that. Give a little bit of indication of the, the, the heat coming off the cigar. And we're going to add a little bit of yellow uh, down the bottom, a little orangish yellow inside the red. There we go. And now we're going to go to another layer, layer number six, and we are going to 
give him a purple suit. So, kind of like the way the green and the, the green and the purple looks together. Uh, very Jokerish in the Batman. Uh, so here we go. We're going to color that in just like that. And again, we're using the soft brush and the airbrush layer. That's what we're using here. And we just start coloring that in. There we go. Make sure we get all the spots. And now we're going to use the erase feature. And we're going to start erasing the outside where the color has gone outside the lines. So just move along his arms there. Get rid of the, the, the color outside the lines. Just like that. And then we just look around in different spots to see if we missed any where we have to get rid of them. So moving around with the eraser, looking for those areas. And now we're going to add a seventh layer. And now we've got to do his shirt. So we're going to add this. He's going to have a pink shirt on. And we just start coloring that in. And once you use a layer that's above the other layer, it won't mess up the layer before it, which is what's wonderful about layers. So there we go. Now we're going to add another layer, layer number eight, and this is going to be the tie. So the tie, we're going to do a little brighter, um, more colorful purple. It's going to stand out from the suit in the pink. And then we're just going to color this in. And now we're going to go back to the shirt layer, and we're going to add a little bit of white to show to indicate where the, the light is hitting on top of the shirt. So what we do is we go back to that layer, we move the color over. Um, actually, we're going to do this. We'll do the suit first. So now we do, so the tie, we got the we got the uh, the light on the tie there. Now we're going to do the light on the shirt. And those are just little little brush strokes with the airbrush that just show that light hitting. Now we're going to go to the suit, and we start right down the lapel. Very light pressure to indicate where the light is hitting. And we just move around like that. And it's easy to know where the light's hitting because with our shade layer, wherever the shade is not hitting, that's where the light would be hitting. So we don't need to press very hard to show where the light is hitting. We just do it nice and soft. And then we go along the side of the suit and just different areas where we want it to pop and we give it a we give it a look over but um, yeah, and then we just look around for things we want to make last minute adjustments on and that's really what it's about you know and for the mob boss you're going to have those intimidating eyebrows which is something that I forgot to put in the draw layer so we just added it in right now it's like what's missing well his menacing eyebrows and then we're going to switch to the white, and we're going to do a couple strokes in the middle of the black because it indicates the light hitting his eyebrows. And then we look around a little bit more, see if we want to add anything else. And, and that's it. We sign it. A little signature down the bottom. Good place to put your signature is always off to the right or off to the left, as long as it's not <laughs> in the way of the drawing and it's off to the side. Uh, but you always want to sign your work because it's it's your work and it's personal to you. So, um, And that's it. That's the video. That's our mob frog boss that we've got here. So thanks for coming.